like Barack Obama draws inspiration from our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. In fact, his inaugural theme, A New Birth of Freedom, is central to Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, which states, and I quote, quote, that we are, uh, we here highly resolve that those, sorry, I am making a mess of this, go back a little bit, thank you, on the teleprompter, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. So Barack Obama will be sworn in as president just days before the 200th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birth. And we've invited Lincoln historian Jonathan Mann right here to our studio to help us celebrate that birth, an anniversary and an upcoming inauguration all together. All Isn't it together. exciting? Well, welcome. Exciting. Thank you very, very much. Very nice to have you here, Jonathan. Thank you very much. And uh, I know that you have a collection of memorabilia relating to uh, President Lincoln uh, that is just amazing and that you're going to be having an exhibit of this memorabilia soon. Right. We'll be celebrating the Lincoln Bicentennial with material borrowed from all over the country and the Library of Congress down at Federal Hall, February through April. Now, what got you into collecting this kind of thing? Um, absolute fascination and reverence for arguably our greatest president. Um, Abraham Lincoln inspires the current president-elect. Uh, you're talking about a man who is the quintessential American story, a man of the frontier, self-educated, who became the greatest master of the English language, who saved the country. Uh, he's an inspiration to everyone. I love your pin. I like your pin, too. <laughs> yes. This was worn in 1860 uh, during the campaign. All of these items here, uh, these campaign flags were way... What were, about this? Uh, that is a poster that would have hung uh, in a meeting hall to celebrate uh, the pending election. That's from Pennsylvania. Um, it uh, speaks to the popularity. Politics in the mid-19th century were a popular sport, high entertainment. Right, uh, there, there was no television, there was no radio. And uh, communication was by poster, by, by uh, mail, by uh, rally. Dump speakers. Uh, the candidates never actually, Lincoln would be uh, looking at campaigns today and think they were a little bit tame. Uh, <laughs> in mid-19th century, they got quite I nasty. don't know. I think he might have been absolutely astonished at the crowds that gather and that the television coverage, I, I think he would have been astonished. I think he would be incredibly astonished at the amount of money spent. What uh, were the inaugural um, festivities like in Lincoln's day? They were, uh, as you know, there are 10 inaugural balls. There was only one in 1861. Uh, it was held in a tent because the Capitol Dome hadn't Ooh. yet been completed. And it was called the Union Ball in 1861 because of the secession crisis. This is an inaugural ball invitation to that event. How beautiful. The Union Ball, the Marine Corps Band serenaded Mary Lincoln with a new tune, the Union March. This is the only known dance oh. card from that event. This is? That's the only one oh. known to remain in existence. And you have this. Oh, how beautiful That'll be in the it exhibit. is. So would you have uh, signed your suitors' names on it? or uh, dancing the, partners? On the back, there was a spot to fill in the dances and the person who oh. you committed to dance to. And then four years later, of course, we have the 1865 inaugural ball. This is an invitation and a ticket to that event, and once again, the only known dance card to remain in existence from the 1865. Where did you find these? Uh, these were all borrowed from collectors all over the country oh, who see. are helping support our exhibit. Oh, how wonderful. Well, the Obamas are moving two girls into the White House, two young girls. Was Lincoln a family man? Lincoln had four sons. Uh, the White House saw two of them live. Uh, Robert Todd Lincoln was away at Harvard. Uh, his two boys, uh, Willie and Tad, lived in the White House, two little boys. They turned the White House into a zoo with all their pets, <laughs> and they put on plays. Sadly, Willie died in the White House uh, of typhoid fever. Oh, I, I, he was only uh, 11 years old, and it sent the president into depression. Tad was the joy of his life from then on, and this is a wonderful little note from Lincoln to the carpenter in the Treasury Department building asking to lend uh, some assistance to Tad who wanted boards. 
to build a dog house in the White House. Oh, what the kind of dog did he have? Uh, he didn't actually have one dog in the White House. He had a dog back home in Springfield, Fido, which was a mutt. But, Fido. Um, <laughs> the popular Fido dog's name in those days. Name. You know um, the most popular dog's name now? Tell me. Max. Max. Yeah, like isn't that, that funny? Simple. So, uh, so, uh, so, but, but his young son wanted to build the doghouse the, himself, right? The, the carpenter offered to build it, and Tad was adamant and said, "No, give me the board, so I'm going to build it." And Tad what's this was, beautiful plate? That is a dessert plate from Mary Lincoln's china pattern that she chose. It's uh, Limoges. Oh. She ordered them from France, and oh, so she beautiful. might have, in fact, served her famous. Vanilla almond cake on that. If you were invited to the White House, you might have had a slice there. Very pretty, don't you think? Nice. And what's that? Lace. That is an evocative relic. That is, and this is the documentation, the provenance, we call it. This is the veil Mary Lincoln wore to Ford's Theater the night of the assassination. Oh. And it was given to Mary Lincoln's black seamstress, Elizabeth Keckley. It's a sad, evocative relic, but something we'll put on exhibit. Now, what would we be surprised about if we knew about Lincoln? Something. Uh, there are so many things uh, that Lincoln basically represents. Uh, a lot of people uh, believe that Lincoln was this folksy country lawyer who self-taught, self-educated. That is true. Lincoln rode the circuit, defended the poor, the indigent, the widows, the orphans, but he also represented the uh, big railroads. He was a successful attorney. These are the keys to his law office and legal bookcases. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're wonderful. And most people don't realize that Lincoln was the So successful. he touched these. Now I'm going to touch something that he touched. Something else that... He probably he... touched this, too. Mary, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> Something else you might uh, not know about Lincoln is sadly related to the assassination. John Wilkes Booth was not just an unknown, insane individual. He was the most celebrated actor of his day. Picture Brad Pitt and Laurence Olivier combined in one going to Washington to murder the president. People knew him from the stage. How, mis and how misguided. Misguided. This is a, a reward broadside for his capture. $100,000 in 1865 was quite a sum. Oh. Well, this is such interesting information and such beautiful, beautifully preserved uh, memorabilia. And uh, good luck with the exhibit. Thank you. We're and at Federal Hall for three okay. months. February now, three right now? Uh, we open February 9th to the public. Okay, so it's free to the sure public. Make sure that you go there free to the public. A wonderful exhibit. Uh, for more information on collecting and appraising historical Americana, visit our website at MarthaStewart.com. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank it was you a very pleasure. Much. Really great. We'll be right back.